On the 29th of June, 2013, a Texan man by the name of Mitchell Dale Sterling vanished without a trace after wandering off from his family in the wilderness of Colorado's Mesa Verde National Park. This place, situated in southwestern US, has a whole unusual and rich history in and of itself. Inside the Mesa Verde National Park, you can find the remnants of a long since past peoples. Their presence is known today because they left behind over 5,000 ancient landmarks, including 600 cave dwellings, numerous watchtowers, and petroglyphs, among other types of buildings, or now ruins, I suppose, including the sunken ceremonial sites known as kivas. This is interesting in and of itself, because I'm not sure that we know the exact reason that the people back then abandoned this site. In any case, Dale, who was 51 years old at the time of his disappearance, was traveling with his wife and parents from Texas through Colorado. This was a family that loved to hike, and Dale himself was a very experienced hiker who'd been doing this kind of thing for a long time. Visiting Mesa Verde National Park was actually an unplanned visit that day, as they had some unexpected car troubles that forced them to stop. This was a beautiful, warm summer day, and there was high visibility, so they arranged for their car to be sorted, and then headed to the visitor center in the park, which they arrived at around 4.30pm. As said, Dale was an experienced hiker, and it seems that as the rest of the family were relaxing inside the visitor center, he decided that he wanted to see the Spruce Treehouse ruins, which were around 400 meters away, and I believe are visible from the center. Because of this, Dale expected this to be a relatively quick trip to and from, and so didn't bother to take any water with him, which was a mistake, because this would also be the second to last time anyone ever saw Dale again. Things take a strange turn now, because as Dale was heading towards the ruins, he came to an intersection, which one path leads to the Spruce Tree House, and the other leads to a longer trail called the Petroglyph Point Trail. Despite it being longer and more hazardous because of various cliff edges and a steeper climb at parts, it is not considered a dangerous trail, at least as described by various articles and trail reviewers. The trail itself is also a loop, so even if you follow the entire 2.4 mile trail, in theory you would just end up back where you started. Dill was spotted on this trail by another family who made small talk and had a pleasant chat before they all continued on their respective walks. This means that Dill, unfortunately, had now been confirmed as having gone down the wrong trail. The trail in question is described as follows. The trail is generally considered a moderately challenging route. This is a very popular area for birding, hiking and running so you'll likely encounter other people while exploring. The best times to visit this trail are March through November. So clearly, Dill did encounter other people, and according to alltrails.com, he also went at one of the best times. Reviews of this trail are also fairly consistent, with the general gist of it being that firstly, it is relatively easy to follow the trail, and secondly, that while not particularly difficult, it does get a bit rocky with ups and downs through some of the terrain. Commenters also suggest that the loop doesn't take very long to complete either, depending on how easy you want to take it of course. This then is quite an interesting description, especially the part that the trail itself is easy to follow and accidentally straying from the trail, in theory then, should not be so much of a problem. So why then was this the last known time anyone ever saw or interacted with Dale again? A search of cliffs and trails has failed to turn up any sign of a Texan man missing since Sunday in Mesa Verde National Park. Park spokeswoman Betty Lawrence said Thursday rescuers are continuing to search the canyons and trails for 51-year-old Mitchell Dale Sterling. Sterling was reported missing by relatives who are at the park awaiting word. From what I can gather, obviously, this was supposed to be a very quick trip for Dale to and from the ruin. 
It's not clear how long the family waited before reporting him missing, but I can't imagine it was too long from the point that he left. I would assume that we're talking a matter of hours because articles state that the park rangers were on this quickly, and when after they searched the ruins, they came to the correct conclusion that he must have gone down the petroglyph trail instead. Interestingly, and as confirmed by the reviews of the trail earlier, the rangers weren't worried about this, just stating that it would be best to wait an hour or two to allow him time to complete the loop or to come back the way he came. However, after this time had lapsed and he still wasn't back, the rangers once again sprang into action, though this time was soon to be joined by other professional search and rescue squads. This is one element of this disappearance that makes it all the more unusual because searches usually aren't initiated so quickly. Usually, you have a situation in which a person has been missing for days or sometimes even a week or more before the search gets going, but this was pretty immediate, relatively speaking. Also, in addition, this must have seemed very hopeful to all concerned, especially after they had the confirmed sighting by the other family on the petroglyph trail. This, as described by others, was an obvious trail that fortunately wasn't too long. So it seems to me that all concerned believed that they were going to find him quickly. And I would assume that they, the searchers, assumed that he'd most likely hurt his leg or something similar while on the trail, as opposed to leaving it for some reason and getting lost. There's also something to be said about having such a precise location to search, because that usually doesn't happen either or at least nowhere near as specific as this case. Right from the get-go, they quite literally knew exactly where he'd been. Again, sadly, and I hope that this serves as a stark reminder and warning to others, Dale decided that it was going to be so quick that he didn't need to take water with him, though he did have his mobile phone. It was said that there was signal within the park, though intermittent, but no one received any word from Dale. Records showed that he tried to access his voicemail at around 7pm the night he disappeared, and before this, the rangers had traced a single ping to his phone. These areas were searched extensively on foot, with dogs, on horseback, and they still couldn't find even a hint of him. As I'm sure that you can imagine, searching a national park for a missing person is an immense task, but as said, the situation was made somewhat better here in the sense that they pretty much had an exact place to search and fan out from. For the first two weeks, the search effort was at its most intense with many boots on the ground who scoured the landscape for him. Search dogs were also called in throughout the entire duration of the search and who also went up and down the petroglyph trail, who from what I can tell, never picked up a scent at any point. Jesse Farias, who was a chief ranger for the National Park, effectively said that they'd had numerous search dog teams go up and down the area, even many months after the disappearance, and none of them picked up anything. I would assume at that time, the hope would have been that the dogs might have picked up the scent of remains. The searchers themselves were said to be having difficulties in understanding what could have happened here, because despite covering a rather large area now, they still had found nothing. It was at this point that specialised mountaineering units came in who rappelled down into the canyon from positions all along the trail, but their search failed also. Helicopter teams armed with thermal imaging technology also got involved in the search, hoping to spot his warmth, especially at night, but other than animals, they never found anything. I did find this account of a writer and hiker named Jodie Peterson who wrote this in 2013. I believe that she was in the park the day following Dale's disappearance, and also documented this the following day too. After an hour of walking, I suddenly heard a weary male voice call, I need some help. I thought of the missing hiker. Perhaps after visiting Spruce Tree House, he'd attempted this trail and run into trouble. I called out several times, but got no response. I thought about going off trail to look, but figured I'd become lost as well if I tried to scramble down those ledges and cliffs. My phone had no signal. I hiked back down the trail as fast as I could, and when I found the chief ranger, I told him what I'd heard. Relief washed over his face as another staffer said, 
we thought we heard a call for help in that area yesterday. They quickly began planning to bring in dogs and more searchers. I left the ranger station and stood looking at the opposite side of the canyon where I'd heard the call. When I got back to my western Colorado home the following day, I checked the news, thinking I'd read that the hiker had been found. Instead, I learned that Mitchell Dale Sterling was still missing and now 70 people were looking for him. I think that Jody made the correct call here. The worst thing that could have happened in this situation is that you also become lost while trying to help. Now, what I do find particularly frustrating is the part where she says that the ranger said that they thought that they'd heard a call for help the day before, literally on the day that Dale disappeared in the same area. It seems to me that if you believe that you'd heard a call for help, is that not grounds to begin an immediate extensive search? It's difficult because I suppose if you're in two minds about what you actually heard and you're not completely sure, then you call out to this person but get no response. It's difficult to make that decision now because you'd be second guessing yourself and terrified of wasting everyone's time. It's difficult to get a sense of time scale here, especially when the family were told to wait for an hour or so. It's not clear to me when the staffer heard this call for help. Anyway, whatever the case may be, Despite having this now absolute precise location where the two calls for help had been heard, and fanning out from that spot in the direction the calls were made, the searchers could find nothing. They shouted for him and tried to make themselves known. They brought dogs to the area, but nothing seemed to work. No more calls were ever heard after this. Obviously, it's not known for certain that Dill was the one calling for help, though given that no one else had been reported missing or anything, it seems reasonable to assume that there was a good chance that it could have been him. Especially because the calls for help were heard on two separate and consecutive days. Despite an intense search effort with dogs going up and down the area, with boots on the ground and helicopters up in the sky, they never saw or heard anything else. The trail for Dale would go cold for seven more years before in September of 2020 his remains were found. Cliff Spencer, the Mesa Verde National Park Superintendent, said that they were given an anonymous tip about a discovery of a body. The reason it was sent in anonymously was because this unknown hiker was in a remote section of the park that was off limits, and it seems he didn't want to get into trouble. Cliff said that Dale's remains were found quite a distance away from where he was last seen, and he traveled 4.2 miles off trail. Interestingly, this area had been searched multiple times seven years prior in 2013, but they were unable to find him. The coroner, George Devers, said that he is 99% sure that the remains are Dale's because his driver's license, credit cards, and a social security card were all present. Cliff continued, stating that it would probably be impossible to determine a cause of passing at this point though noted that foul play wasn't suspected, nor animal predation, as there were no signs of that. Many of the bones at the scene were bleached, and Cliff said it probably isn't possible to perform a DNA test on them. In addition, and to clarify, Cliff noted that this off-limit area was at the bottom of a canyon, and is believed to be the exact spot where Dale passed away. So I suppose, what's being said then, is that they don't believe that the body had been moved. There are some fairly unusual aspects to this. Firstly, the assumption made at the time of the initial searching, especially around two weeks in, they believed that they were looking for a body. It was also surmised that if he was in this general area, the search dogs would have led them straight to him because of, and without trying to be too descriptive, the potent smell that would have been present. Other than saying that he was found in an area that was already searched at the bottom of a canyon and stating that it was 4.2 miles away, authorities, as far as I can tell, never gave anything more precise, so I've no idea where he was actually found within the radius. Though at 4.2 miles away, that would make it right at the edge somewhere, presumably somewhere here, given that this was the trail. I suppose that they might not want to be so forthcoming with that information as to not attract people into areas that they shouldn't be, but it would have been interesting to know. I can only assume it was to the south, I've no idea. I also have no idea where the call for help was heard, 
nor where he might have left the trail. Dill was considered a seasoned hiker, so it's hard to imagine that he just strayed from the trail, at least under normal circumstances. Sadly, as said before, he chose not to bring water. Is it possible that he became delirious at some point down the trail because of the heat? There were no signs of animal predation, making this next suggestion less likely, but I have heard of those that have been pushed from the trail by an animal, not so much physically, but if you spot something that makes you uneasy and panicky, I could imagine backing away in the wrong direction and then quickly finding yourself in a situation where you're now just completely lost. Obviously, this is nothing more than speculation now, but it is surprising that the initial search effort was unable to find even a trace of him. At this point, while reading about Dale and the park, I came across a number of articles discussing various Native American tribes' view of this place, which just comes to add an air of creepiness to this whole incident. It's stated that the Ute people and the Navajo people don't venture out to these areas and have warned others of doing so. I'm not sure if that might be one of the reasons that these areas are supposed to be off limits in the first place, perhaps out of respect, and perhaps the area is just somewhat more dangerous also because it hasn't been tended to by people in a long time. In around 1200 AD, it's thought that the ancestral Puebloans held a population of approximately 30,000 people in this place. But for some reason, that isn't completely clear to this day, and is still debated, they had all vanished and left the area by 1280. All of the abandoned structures were then left dormant for the next 600 years, I believe, when cowboys rediscovered the site in the 1880s. I would also assume that Native Americans in the area knew of this place, as it's considered sacred to the Ute and Navajo tribes respectively, but as stated, they would not venture there. These things tend to be somewhat esoteric, and perhaps abstract in places too, but the native people have stories and beliefs in relation to this place. They believe that, and warn others of disturbing these areas for fear of awakening what they call the Chindi, which they believe are some kind of malevolent spirit. While unlike other beliefs and legends held by the natives, there is nothing specific I can find in relation to the Chindi and people going missing. However, the stories hold that the Chindi cause physical illness, psychological distress, and general misfortune, or in the worst case, cause a person to pass away. I suppose, those who believe in such things could argue that those things could generally cause a person to become disoriented and lost. It seems to me that if the natives of a country warn you about an area, you should probably just listen and take their advice in general. Because even if they hold the more esoteric beliefs about an area, in terms of spirits or it's something else, it's still worth heeding their advice, because they are still probably telling you that an area is dangerous for good reason. Even if you personally think that the reason given is misguided or whatnot. And in that scenario, the only thing you lose is not seeing a particular site. And also, on that note actually, it's probably not a good idea to be disrespectful to the locals either. Obviously, none of that applies to Dale because he just became lost inside the park and will have had absolutely no idea where he was. At the time, Jody reasoned that Dill had probably tried to take a shortcut back down from the petroglyph trail towards his family and then fell. That would explain the calls for help and it would have been very difficult to spot him if he'd fallen into a crevice. But seven years later, he was also found 4.2 miles away from the point he was last seen and was now discovered in an area that was quite literally off limits. So I'm not sure that completely checks out either. We can also reason that the spot Jody heard his call for help was probably nowhere near an area that was considered off limits. And far more likely, she was just on the trail itself. So it's hard to imagine he'd fallen, was hurt, and then traveled all that distance away. Just to clarify that point, Dale Sterling's body was found on September 17, 4.2 miles from where he was last seen and more than 2 miles from the nearest trail. A set of bones and clothes along with several IDs and credit cards were found at the base of a lone tree in the bottom of a ravine. Chapin Mesa, the section of the park where Sterling's remains were found, was searched pretty extensively in the weeks after he went missing. How it was that he was missed at that point, we may never know, said the park spokeswoman, Christy Brown. Well, that's very reassuring. 
I suppose Christy was right though. All of the details as to Dale's movements and what exactly happened will never be understood now. People involved in the search at the time called this whole ordeal a head scratcher and you can see why. It very much seems like Dale should have been found fairly early on given everything that happened and having a specific location the way they did and especially including the two calls for help. It's also interesting that the area that he was later found beneath the tree had already been extensively searched multiple times before so he'd either been missed or just wasn't there at all at the time. I've just had to come back and edit this in but I also found an article that stated that his remains were found west of Durango and to the east of the park. So he was found somewhere around here in that case? That's very odd, it's difficult to understand how that then happened. It seems that from the point he vanished, you'd quite literally have to cross a road at some point. Perhaps they just assumed east of the park because it was stated west of Durango? Surely they have to be wrong about that. I honestly have no idea and on that point of confusion, that also brings us to the end of the paper trail. This was a very confusing and frankly frustrating disappearance. It's such a horrible shame that there wasn't a different outcome here. I'd just like to take the time to thank you for watching and a big thank you to the patrons who I'm very appreciative of who have been running around on the screen. Thank you all very much for helping me to make these videos. If you found the video interesting then please do leave a like, hit the bell and subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me an awful lot. If not, then feel free to leave a dislike, I'm just looking for your honest opinion either way. As always, I hope that you've had a great day or evening depending on where you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe guys, peace.